the fabulous brother was a fast fat, and I particularly like the detective of the last <laughs> Now, this was embarrassing because the kid advanced just fired me for being inefficient and refusing to be a win. And so when the Bell Clark said, um, what was the name of the actor? What was the name of the actors, the two actors? And he said, well, how am I going on actor? He said, only one actor. What do you mean? And he said, well, his name is John Pantry. He said, well, I can't tell you. He said, I'm John Pantry. He said, oh, is that with all of himself? And he said, um, and yes, it is. He said, oh, but he's a talented talent. He knew his father well. He was delightful family. Yes, he's bound to do well. Bound to bound to do well. Yes, very good. Like to meet him the last. Like to meet him. So I was called up. I brought the poor girl coward and I shook his hand warmly and I could have kissed him, which would have been a very dangerous thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I could have kissed him. Later I did, when I grew to love him dearly. He was a wonderful, wonderful man. But anyway, he was the fellow really sort of set me off on the right path. That was one of my highlights of my life. I'll read for a minute, but... Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, tell us about some of your early life, uh, school. Uh, I think you went to Fresh High School in Stone. Ah, what do you mean, you believe? Um, no, I know you went there. Thank you, no, this is the most extraordinary thing. Now, you never honestly credit this, which is called the force of circumstance. Unbelievable. The other night, we were having dinner. Louise and I were having dinner together. And she said, look, um, I may be crazy, but um, were you ever at the school in England called Frensham Heights? And I said, yes, I was. How the hell did you know that? And she said, well, one day you were driving along in the country and you stopped two young children that were walking along the, the, the country lane and you said, um, are you by any chance French and Heights pupils? And the two kids said yes. And uh, and I said, oh, oh, I used to be at French and Heights. Uh, is it in session? And they said yes. And I, and, uh, and I said, oh, well, I think I'll pop up and see who's there. Master now, I'll pop up and see them. It was only her brother and sister. <laughs> and it's not what they And it was true. And that's the thing we met. But I was at French and Heights because I like girls. Um, <laughs> and it's a occasional school, and I've been at sporting schools, and I've been expelled from all of them. I was at Sherman Public School, which was a nauseous experience. Uh, they had a great thing called fagging, going on. Not what you mean, incidentally. <laughs> fagging is rushing about and doing jobs for, for prefects. And I objected to that, and uh, I was roundly and severely beaten by my fag master for things. I mean, one day, I remember I, I was, uh, was summoned. Um, um, they, he said, they yell, fag! And every small boy had to jump up and run like hell, you see, run in, up along through the junior day room and round the corner, up the passage, and form a line. And then the prefect of course said, right, last boy. And the last one, oh, hello, that's you, yes. And uh, <laughs> the last boy would then say, yes, sir. And he'd say, right, come on, you, you've got the job. You, I didn't want the job. Now, I couldn't be anybody anything else but last boy because my, my room or my desk was right over there and the exit to the junior day room was right down there. So when somebody up here yelled back and everybody went boom down there, I was going to be last. So I said, look, why do you bother to call back? Why don't you just say first to me? Because I'm out to be the one. <laughs> so said, into the courtyards, I got six of the best, got came with six of the best, but the insolence. And then one day I was doing, learning to play the trumpet to my father's in pure hit. And uh, I was learning to play the trumpet and a, and a small boy came rushing over, panting, and said, <coughs> So I said, what the hell does he want? And he said, I don't know. And so I ran all the way back to the house, and I ran up the passage, and I said, uh, yes, Carlton, you wanted me? And he said, yes, make me a piece of toast. <laughs> Can you imagine anything more ridiculous? And there I was, my poor father, paying for my music lessons, a quarter of a mile away, and then I was blowing a trumpet and trying to learn how to do it, and, and somebody yells at me and tells me to go and make him a piece of toast. And I said, what's the matter, you crippled? <laughs> <laughs> you get a bit of bread, you stick it off the end of a fork, and you hold it there with a fire. And then I said, surely you can do that, and, and slam down. So he said, into the quad, six of the best, I've got another six, and that is my arm. And I got very, very bored with this. And if you read my book, and it's a book of, of mine now, which you can buy, it, it, I, it, I'm making arrangements for it to be sold in Canada. It's uh, sold all over the United States, but there's a problem that there's been with the customs bringing it in. Uh, it's called Moon Boots and Dinner Suits, and it's the story of my life up till 1945, anyway. Uh, and uh, I got bored with this being beaten by my bag master, and I rebelled, and I said, if you uh, raise a cane to me or raise a hand to me once again, I'll kill you. You know, so <laughs> the man that people make. As I told you yesterday, it was just before I said, and therefore I had a temper of a Frenchman. 
And uh, when that fag master came down the corner, I managed to get a hold of the cane and I hit him across the face with it. <laughs> and it was like a saber kind of blow, and it opened him up from there to there. He had about 16 stitches in his face. And it didn't do me a lot of work because I was duly expelled from that school as well. <laughs> However, I felt better about it. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, later on in your life, of course, you played on uh, lots of different films. What sort of uh, films did you play? Most of the comedies or serious roles? So what did you prefer? Uh, in the film business, well, uh, uh, the story of my sort of career really started in, in, in this well. I'll, I'll sort of start earlier on in the, in the, uh, in the story. Uh, I, during, the, during the war, I was in the Navy, and we talked a bit about that yesterday. Uh, and when I, when the last job that I had was with the Naval Broadcasting Section. And it was uh, in that section uh, that I was sent uh, in, in the capacity of a spy to listen to a radio show run by a man called Eric Barker. Uh, he was being very rude about my lord to the Admiralty, and he was not being a, a tall server. I was a, a, a serving officer of his, his Navy should be. And I was sent along to see what the hell he was talking about, why he was upsetting people. And I was sitting at the back of the auditorium in the dark when he said, somebody said, uh, oh, where's Lieutenant Nelson Burton, who was now an eminent? theatre director, you may have heard of him, he's directed lots of great things on television in the United States. And he said, oh, he can't be here today. And he said, oh, God, who's going to shout out the things from the audience? And I said, I will. And he looked and he said, who are you? And I said, Lieutenant uh, Murphy. And he said, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm a spy. <laughs> and he said, who would become a spy? And I said, you. And he said, why? And he said, because you're being rude about my norms of the Admiralty, etc., etc., et et and politicians and so on. And he said, am I? And I said, yes, you're, you're naughty and you're not supposed to do it, and it has nothing to do with it, um, I'll do the lines for you. And he said, uh, you're in a relation of Roland Bertry, who was my dad, who was very early in the theatre in those days, and I said, yes, I'm his son. He said, oh, you should be all right, then come on, I'll be come. And so I remember the first line that I ever did on comedy radio, and I was sitting in the audience like you are, because we all have audiences for comedy shows, and uh, Eric Barker was talking to his wife, Pearl Hackney, and they were both in the Navy, she was a red, and they were arguing. And I leaped to my feet, and in the raucous Cockney voice said, Here! Why don't you leave him alone? You're always picking on the poor perisher. <laughs> well, of course, everybody laughed. That was my first laugh I'd ever got on radio, and I was very chuffed with this. And then Pearl stops, and then she turns to her husband, Eric, and she said, Who on earth is that? And Eric replied, Oh, that's the Minister of Education. <laughs> Now, that is precisely the kind of joke that I was sent down there to stop him saying. <laughs> so after the show was over, Eric said, well, that was very good. And, uh, and, he, and I said, uh, yes. And he said, are you going to report me? And I said, no, because I'm a very bad spy. <laughs> and I said, but I'm free for Sunday concerts. And, I, and he said, OK, come back next week. And I did, and I was with him for five years, and I started my entire career on radio. So it's an extraordinary thing that, that, that you can get one break. Everybody is up for a break in life, in any profession. And if you grab that break, it can take you straight to the top. And it did with me, because radio was then the all-important thing. And I was with Eric Barker. We became the top number one radio show. And eventually, I had started in with him. Uh, and uh, I joined a, a famous couple of comedians called Drew and Morris, which were a, a very important both or variety of comics. And we did a show called Up the Pole for many, many years. Then I had my own show called Huffington Post Office, and the show called John Patrick goes round to the bend, very appropriate that. <laughs> and I worked on radio for many years, and then went into the variety business, and all the while this was going on, I started in a small way doing movies. And I was making about uh, six or seven movies a year, but any of you uh, 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 movie buffs as well as television buffs, if you sort of look up those extraordinary uh, books that are, are still published, I, I, I don't know who buys them, people do. Uh, they, they will list practically every actor in the world, and they will list everything he's ever done. And you can go down with Eric, my friend Eric Hoffman. He knows much more about the films than I've been in, and I know myself. And he'll, <laughs> he'll tell me he's seen me in a movie called Dancing in the Dark, and I said, I was never in a movie called Dancing in the Dark. He said, oh, yes, you were. And he tells me the plot, the story, what I played, and everything else. In fact, he tells me what I earned. <laughs> 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 